Hello, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. How the hell are you? Friday afternoon, one o'clock. It must be online memory afternoon. My name's John O'Casson. We're with the Warm and Toasty Club, and this is episode 46 of our online memory afternoons. Coming up to a year celebration, though celebration is probably not the best word to use, actually, when I think about it. What have we got this afternoon? We've got a show packed with goodness. Goodness. Yes, indeed. We have got the retro raffle, of course, coming up. We've got memory of the week. So here's the scenario. Memory of the meek, week. Memory of the meek. Um, I'll plant it in your head. <clears throat> see what you think. What do you remember about your favourite moments of going to the flicks, going to the pictures, the movies, the cinema? Did you go to Saturday morning cinema? Um, did you just like go and see, I don't know, big films like Jaws or E.T. or... Greece, did you have chills? Were they multiplying? Um, that sort of thing. What's your favourite memories of going to the pictures? Um, that's going to be our memory of the week. Retro raffle. We've got the wonderful Sasha coming up. She's going to be singing three songs. She's rather brilliant. So hang around for her. She'll be with us from about half one-ish onwards. Um, we've got Vintage Comedian of the Week this week. Vintage Comedian, a new one. You know, we like to change it up. Um, we've got Jeanette's poem of the week, and we've got a lot of old banter. What do you call it? Me, Tom, and Jeanette. Let's bring them forth. Let's celebrate their uh, here -ness. There they are. How are you? Hi, everyone. Hi, Jono. Hi. Hi, Tom. How, how are you Hi. doing, Jeanette? I'm doing fine. Thank you very much. Good. Yep. Look, looking you? good. Yes, yes. Very well. Thank you. Looking like good. A farmer Tom. today. I've got my dungarees on. Yeah. Oh, you're a farmer. But I'm mixing it with uh, a proper shirt. <laughs> yeah. Ready for everything. Mixed cuisine. Um, well, not cuisine. What am I on about? It's when uh, when people have nowadays they'll have like chips with um, sort of like sort of uh, Mediterranean food. No, that's got it wrong. <laughs> What's it? A uh, fusion? They call it fusion oh, cuisine. Yeah. Well, you have fusion. So you're fusion in your wardrobe today. I, I call it confusion. Confusion. <laughs> nice, nice. Thought, How are you, Tom? Yeah, I thought Dex is Midnight Runners. Yeah. Jeanette Lyon said it was Reaper T. I kind of love you, but... I was kind of thinking it would be nicer if I had a, a, a nice big tight black belt around my middle and I would look like Banana Rama. That's the kind of memory I have of dungarees. They're much nicer. Yeah, cool summer. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Robert De Niro's waiting. Yes. <laughs> I um I saw De Dexy's Midnight Runners once in Shaftesbury Avenue at a gig and then um I liked that they were all on stage in their dungarees and as they went to get the cab out the back, they'd all changed into sort of three-piece suits and that. Um, CDs. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> sorry, you okay, Tom? Yes, I'm fine, thank you. Yep. Good, 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 good to see you. You've got the light on you today. Yeah. How come you've got nice light there and it's a bit grey here on this side of Colchester, the poor side? Yeah, well, you know, we're near the centre of the town. You know. Yeah, you're the highest point, aren't you? It's always shiny here, so high. Yeah, You're above the clouds. Yeah, <laughs> it is that high in Colchester, Essex. Anyone watching? Christine, hello. She says hello, everyone. Hi, Chris. Nice to see you. Glad you're with us. Tom Hardy, that man in the middle, says hi. Elmi White says hi, everybody. Hi, Elmi. Rosanna, hi. I made it. Yippee. Hope you're all well and safe. We are. We are. Are we safe, people? Yeah. I feel quite safe in in my house. Yeah, I feel safe. You safe, Tom? Um, yeah. Not, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had one vaccination, so, you know, I'll feel safer when I've had two. When are you due the second? Uh, probably in about three months. <laughs> I don't know, three, two months maybe. Three years. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Sarah goes. Hang on, um, as you say in the, uh, uh, in the warm and toasty way, maybe never. <laughs> maybe never, darling. <laughs> Can you come in? No, <laughs> not at all, darling. <laughs> um, let's play the retro raffle. Yeah. 
Let's press the button. <laughs> it's the retro raffle. It's coming to your screen. It's the retro raffle. Never has been seen. It's the retro raffle. Well, it's coming. It's coming to your screen. Oh yeah, it's coming, it's coming to your screen. Retro Apple Facebook Live. Yeah, yeah. One day, one day I'll be like Tom and I'll be all too cool for school. Like I won't be dancing with in the middle, you know, like school school disco night, and you're all around the edges, the boys and the girls, and you slowly move to the <laughs> whereas there's me just in the middle going <laughs> like an idiot. Idiot. Um Right. It's very cool. You're very cool, Tom. Am I? Am I doing yeah. I very cool. Do not. Don't you, Tom? Would you like some counselling after the show? Not really. I don't mind being cool. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I think you're pretty cool. You're a pretty laid back guy and a guy. I was just looking up Cotton Eye Joe. That's what you reminded me of as well. Oh, oh Cotton Eye Joe. <laughs> yeah. Cotton Eye Joe. <laughs> okay. Bring it on. I don't care. Just, yeah. I could check it all today. I've had my lunch. I'm not even going to eat during the show. That's <laughs> first. <laughs> That's first. And hello to Jenny. Jenny Lifko, um, apparently the queen of the retro raffle scene. So let's see how she gets some. So this is the first prize. This is this week we're at the movies. So this week we're, we're going to be um, talking about the memory of the week, we're going to the pictures. The, I don't know if you can see this. All right, I'll tell you what, I'll take us off screen so everybody can see it just for one second, one second. So it's half time. It's in at the pictures. Half time. It's not a football match. Um, <laughs> it's uh, it's the interval at the pictures at the flicks and the the lady, usually a lady. I haven't actually seen a man, but a man could do it as well. Um, the usherette comes around with the iced box, and um, where is it? I'll take that one off. I'm just flicking around with the pictures today. I did find one for you, um, one that had been used earlier. There it is. They have one of these little thing. They have straps over them. They have an assorted uh, array of prizes in the form of ice creams, really. So there are what it looks like. You can pick. You can pick a velvet vanilla. You can pick other things I can't read. A uh, coldy strawberry sundae. Uh, and then chuck ice. Uh, you can pick one of those. They're 8p. 8p or 10p for each one. Chalk ice is an, an, an icing. If you get the question right, you can pick one and we will send it to you. Maybe never. Some interesting facts about get off my life. <laughs> <laughs> I like it that, that we, when we do these things, the wheels are always just about to fall off um, <laughs> constantly. Uh, hi, Sandra. Nice to see you, Sandy. Here's the first question in the retro raffle. Get this right and you win. A, a nice iced treat. Mm -hmm. Peter O'Toole played a British Army lieutenant who defies orders to lead a guerrilla war in the Middle East in a movie that won the Best Picture Oscar for 1962. What was the movie? Can you hear my squeaky chip? Can you hear my squeaky? I now. Now you've mentioned it. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, I, was, I don't know what I was making noises there. Have you got a squeaky one, Tom? I think that's Jeanette. That's it's Jeanette? Me. Yeah, I have. Yeah. Oh, yours is more like a squelchy one. Is it a bit wet? Uh, it's really loud and squeaky, and I keep thinking that I should oil it. I've even got three and one out of the shed, but I haven't done it yet. Three and one? You're so 1970s. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just right for show. Three <laughs> and one. I haven't used that since 1974. <clears throat> Uh, I, I go with um, WD-40. Other brands are available. I've got that, but that's for the motorbike. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, Not put bad. it outside and then it let it drip for a while. <laughs> um, Jenny, um, Jenny, Jenny Lifko, the former queen, reinstated queen of the retro raffle scene. She's calling the, the answer and she's very good. Keith is saying eyeless in Gaza. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember that one. <laughs> no. I, I'm, I'm uh, just questioning the spelling 
of yeah. uh, Jenny Lithgow's well, look at her, look at her making it clear to you in her next comment. Ah, uh, uh, yes. Okay. That See, I'm not touching yet. the Facebook. If I touch the Facebook, it seems it all goes off. Right, don't it's touch like I've got a distract button. It's mm -hmm. like my life, really. Go on Facebook. Boom. Do you think, <laughs> do you think Keith is just like a spell check thing? God, that'd be a what? <laughs> be one hell of a spell check. Eyeless in Gaza. No, I think he's a funny man, and I think he makes a a little sort of dry, humoured um, reference. Am I wrong, Keith? Are you not humor humorous? Are you humorless? <laughs> <laughs> Very clever. <laughs> Rosanna's know. got it right. The answer, of course, to the film where Peter O'Toole played a British Army lieutenant in a guerrilla war in the Middle East in 1962 was. Lawrence of Arabia, and you get to pick your chalk ice. What are you going to have, Jenny? What sort of chalk ice, Rosanna? What kind of one? You're going to have a chalk <clears> ice, you're going to have one with a Cornish uh, strawberry sundae, a velvet vanilla, or vanilla, or the chocolate one. Depends what you'll get because some of them are 8p and we can't stretch to the 10p ones. Um, we're on a bunch. Know, the last time I bought a little tub of ice cream, not in the cinema, but uh, in the theatre, I don't know what I was saying but I wouldn't get it for me but I've got it for my daughter and so it must have been years ago and it was something like three pounds fifty mm. for a tub of ice cream what a ripple 17.99 now for one yeah <laughs> if the theatres were open um I do remember buying them and I remember there was a revival for a while probably in the 90s of people having events and they had usherettes with uh, mm. sweets and that, and they used to have bags of sweets, which I thought was an be even better idea. Yeah. Well, the Corn Exchange in Ipswich, because um, Emma Emma does a sort of concert there three times a year. Well, not during lockdown, of course, but normally. Um, and they still bring that tray out with ice creams in. Nice. Half time. I like nice. it. And it's only two pounds for a, for a very nice ice cream. Two pounds. That's fantastic. Two pound. That's I really love good. it. I've seen um, in films when the ladies go around in nightclubs, possibly in America, and they have those, and and they're full of different kinds of cigarettes. Yeah, yeah. Cigarette girls at nightclubs, funny girls. Well, like we do that. a similar thing with our live shows at Colchester Arts Centre, except we, we bring yeah. trays of toast, <laughs> um, freshly made. Beautifully buttered toast. Jeanette's done many of them in your life, haven't you, Jeanette? I have, yeah. Not in a tray like that. You just of those loads of plates. You get some of those trays, shouldn't you, and bring the toast? We, we could, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to dress like Bunny Girl. We could have a little change round. You could do that. <laughs> you could do Britney Spears again. Britney Spears with a flat, yeah. yeah, and a white shirt. <laughs> I'll do it otherwise. Because I've got quite good legs. Um, and you've got good hair for <laughs> plants. Yeah, not bad hair. Um, Roseanne is going to go with Cornish vanilla. Yep. Yeah, we stretch. We add the extra 2p, 10p. We'll send it to you. We don't know how it arrived. You know, ice cream through the post, not the greatest idea. Jenny's going to go with any. And Sandra hopes us we are all well. Yes, we are, Sandra, and we hope you are too. Keith says at Glastonbury, the lady served tequila slammers on trays in the pyramid stage field. Mm. I'd go there. A lot of people would, would, was talking about that earlier with uh, guests coming up, Sasha. Festivals, they, that'd be good to be back. Live events, well, that'd be nice. Oh, Keith. Um, so that's the first question. The se second question on the <clears throat> pro raffle, here it is. Um, I think this is a relatively easy one. What was the nationality of Zorba in the film with Anthony Quinn? And I'll give you a clue. It's not Welsh. You sure? Because <laughs> I had a feeling he was Welsh. Yeah. <laughs> Zorba, the, Zorba the Welsh. Zorba the, the, the Welsh. Taffy, also known as Taffy. <laughs> Taffy. Is Keith Glynn. That's a bit of a Welsh name, isn't it? Yeah, that is a, a Welsh name. Mm -hmm. I know. think it sounds Russian because initials, his initials are KGB. <laughs> I think he's got the um, spell check problem again. He says Hellenic. <laughs> Christine's got it right. Well done, Chris. Jenny's got it right. What, what would we expect other than the right answer from the queen of the retro raffle scene? Dr. Sandy is in the building. Hello, Sandy. Sandy, uh, Sandra Collins, she says Irish. It's not Irish. 
Rosanna's got it right. Elmi's got it right. Keith's got it wrong. No, Helen got it wrong. The Keith. first one that Keith said. Yeah, was, Keith's got it right though. He was the first one to get it, but yeah. Hellas, isn't it? That's Hel Hellenic is yeah. the correct name. Hel for Hellas country. is the truth, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, Sylvie, she says she's got on, but she's got no sound. Ah, oh, Sylvie, oh. we're so pleased you're here. Shame you can't hear us. We're not talking anything interesting anyway. Do that in sign language for her, Jono. I, I can't do that. My son can do it. I can't. Um... <laughs> <laughs> International Italian restaurant language. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, no, the one I always use is... That's what I want to feel. Don't have to say anything. They come. I over. like that you use two hands. I'm just like that, and then <laughs> I'm like, um, <laughs> when I see someone I don't like in the car. <laughs> um, hello, John. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Do you know the answer to the question? What's the nationality of Zorba in the film with Anthony Quinn? I'm going to tell you the answer because a number of people have got it, and they can choose their ice creams. It was Zorba the Greek. Zorba the Greek. So what are you going to pick for your ice creams, people? Have a think about it. I'm going to leave them up for a second, just for a second, until we hear from Chris. Mm. There we go. They can pick their things. Thanks for taking part in Retro Raffle of the Week. Now, that is the lovely Chris in the bottom corner there. And I spoke to her on the phone earlier this week and she sent a little message. Let me find it. Some interesting facts about you, what you've done in your life. Some interesting facts about you, the places you've been, the people you've seen. It is interesting facts about you, and that this week is Christine, Chris Jackson. She's <clears throat> just left a message that I should say first before I play her lovely message, and it says, "We have had some great news to tell. We are told today we are going to be great grandparents in August." Yay. Congratulations, Chris! That's fantastic. Um, Sandy's asking for coconut ice cream. Did you get the question right? Yuck. Have a think about it. Um, we'll send you some some in the post, maybe, maybe not. Um, <laughs> congratulations to Chris and Brian. That's wonderful news. Great grandparents. Wow. Really pleased for you. Let's have a listen to Chrissy. She's talking into a quick hello and a few little facts about her. Hello, everybody. I am Chris, and I'm married and blessed with two lovely daughters and five beautiful grandchildren. I love our Friday afternoons and miss my friends at Enoch House. A big hello to any of them if they're watching. Hope you're all well and hope we can get together very soon. I left school and as I love children, I got a nice job living in as a nanny to a lovely family and looked after three lovely girls. After I got married and having our children, we decided to help other children. So we fostered for 35 years and had 128 children in our care. Our age group was babies to five years. A very challenging time, but so rewarding. I also helped in preschool groups with young families. Children are my world, and I would just like to thank Jono now, and Jeanette and Tom for our Friday afternoons, and hope we can all meet up in reality soon. Bye for now, and all keep safe. Oh, the lovely Chris, um, a truly lovely lady, as well as her innocent husband, Brian, really just beautiful people. Um, thanks for doing that, Chris. And she's never missed a episode of the Online Memory Afternoons. 40, 46 now. Wow. Congratulations from Jenny, Chris and Brian. Join the club. Jenny Lifko's a great grandparent. Who would have known? Young Jenny. Um Sandy says, amazing foster mum, Christine. What a lovely woman. Um, she is. She's very, very nice. And we're uh, very honoured to know her. Thank you for taking the time to do that message. Um, lovely to hear your story. Chris says, Elmi, with three kisses. 
How are we splashing the kisses today? <laughs> <laughs> Be nice to see Chris and Brian and the gang again, won't it, uh, Tom and Jeanette? Yeah, it was nice that when I popped one of the uh, little parcels around to her before Christmas, that was lovely. That was nice to see her and Brian. I'm sorry that we stood on the doorstep so long with the door open, all the heat went out. But we just didn't want to stop, did we? We had a lot to chat about. It was really lovely. But, oh, like Elmi said to me when I met her as well, she's a hugger. So am I. And how, you know, how me and Chrissy didn't hug each other. I don't know, but we restrained. But, yeah, I miss her. Do you think after the um, lockdown stays, there's going to be a new thing that's coming out and they're going to sort of have to have a curb on hugging? Yeah, they'll have to with me. <laughs> Just won't be letting go of people. You know, the Prime Minister or the Health Secretary have come up, it's a news bulletin, we're having people doing random hugging. You know, you just can't do it anymore. It's too much. <laughs> No, um, some things just won't change, will they? I don't think so. I think there'll no. be mass hugs. I, I think we're going to have, next time we do a warm and toasty club at um, uh, at one of the venues, I think we're not going to get much done because all we're going to be doing is hugging. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking for me. Yeah, yeah. You'll well, have uh, cold cups of tea by the time I've hugged you all. Yeah, well, we should have massive group hugs instead of doing the conga. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the hugger. <laughs> Yeah, because you can't really you can't really social distance um, doing the conga either, can you? You know, it just doesn't work. <laughs> um, Sandy says that there'll be a hugging frenzy. There will, and Sandra says that's great news, Chris, Chris and Brian. Yeah, yeah. congratulations. Um, hugathon, a hugathon. Yes, we actually probably could make a bit of money for our calls <laughs> if we start selling hugs. <laughs> we could if we did them now it'd be on the black market wouldn't it you know <laughs> <laughs> so we likened this whole thing to the the um prohibition time when you kind of hear about people that are doing things they shouldn't that are not part of the whole lockdown thing and people that are being naughty and yep. they're saying it's like prohibition and contraband. so you know kind of ignore it a bit contraband hug yeah <laughs> Yeah, there's a there's a video. I remember when there was a thing about toilet rolls and everybody was mass buying toilet rolls. And there was a good video of a guy on the street corner saying, "Do you want some?" Yeah, all right. Come around the back. I've got some. And he just like, how much? And he <laughs> gives him a, a roll for a ten or whatever it was. Um, I do remember when that was happening. A local shop sold three, no, four toilet rolls for twelve pound. Wow. And they wonder why they haven't got any customers anymore. Yeah. Oh. Shame. Shame. Um. Elmi has had another letter. She, she is shielding until the 31st of March. March. Oh, bless you, Elmi. Oh, gosh. Well, um, we're here until then. We'll be with you every Friday. And um, do you like puzzles, Elmi? Got some puzzles. Do you like audio books, audio cassettes, I should say? We've got some of those to share, if they're any good to you. Um, socially distanced conga definitely doesn't work. Jono says, Sand, Dr. Sandy, no, it might do. You know, we could sell it cheap on the black market. Helen says, I know I asked before, but did he hear the message? Could you please uh, tell Roly Collier hello from his daughter? We did mention it before, um, but Roly, uh, your daughter says hello. You know your daughter, Helen? She says, hello, how are you? Um, hope you're well, Roly. And um, Betty as well, hope you're well. Brian said we might be taxed for hugging. We might be. Imagine that. Anyway, memory of the week. Memory of the week. No jingle. No jingle for memory of the week. What's your favourite memories of going to the cinema? I'm going to ask Tom and Jeanette in a sec, but going to the cinema, to the flicks, be it Saturday morning or going to a big matinee performance, whatever it was, the pictures, the movies, the cinema, the films, whatever you call it. Um, Helen says thank you and lovely to see Tracy on there. Where's Tracy? Who can see? I can't see her. Um, no, I can't see Tracy either, but I'm sure she'll appear in a minute. Thank you, Chris. It was lovely. I'm glad you're with us. Thanks for that lovely message. Tom, do you remember going to the cinema before all this business? Have you ever been to the cinema? No, I've never been. <laughs> <laughs> what was the last film you've never seen then? The last film? I don't know, actually. Ooh. 
it was at the Curzon. I can't remember what it was, though. <laughs> That's a bit rubbish, isn't it? It couldn't have been. Oh, it might have been the James Bond film or something like that, actually. Last James time. Bond. Nice, nice. Is that Curzon in Colchester? Yeah. It was. A, it, it, yeah, it wasn't an arty film. No. I can't remember what it was. It I'm was... the same. You know, we watch films like you stream them nowadays, you get Netflix or whatever you watch it on, and you watch a really good film. And if I watched it last week, I won't remember what it is. Well, I, do. I remember if I was like 12 and going in the side door to watch Grease for the third time. <laughs> but I don't remember what I watched last week. How about you, Jeanette? What What do you go? What do you remember going to see the, uh, the cinema? When I was little, I saw uh, Dr. Shivago. Ooh. And I was a bit too young, really. I'd probably appreciate it more now, but I did like it, and I liked the music, although I remember crying, and I was very sad, and the images I remember was um, snow, but with some blood in it, somebody had obviously been killed. And um, But before that, and I don't remember it, my mum took us to see The Jungle Book. My dad was always working, and my mum had four, <laughs> four kids within five years, so we were all really young, and it must have been like herding cats trying to get us on a bus because she never drove. So I only I only remember the once going to see Dr. Zhivago, but I think she took us a couple of times. But yeah. as an adult, I love it. But I still I only go once or twice a year in normal times. And but it's a really big treat for me. It's <clears throat> it's the only time I'll have ice cream, really. And that's the the Ben and Jerry's one at um, Colchester Odeon, because they have ones with banana and nuts in and they're my favorite things. Yum so, to but it's, it's a really big deal for me to go to the cinema. I, I really treat it like a big night out. I love it. And then when you go to these new big cinemas that have got really wide seats with kind of big cup holders and, and they're like sitting in your own armchair. They're so yeah. wonderful. Yeah, they're nice. It's queuing up outside though. Oh, I don't know about queuing. I, I don't miss that at all. <laughs> no. And you not remember having to queue outside the Yeah, cinema? I do. That was such a thing, wasn't it? Every time you used every to, time. Yeah, every time you you probably just you were too poor to go a lot, weren't you? Yeah. I think there was cues, there was things when I was uh, at school and there was things like Jaws and everybody talked about it and it was so scary and, and there was cues and when things first came out, there were enormous cues. I remember that. But I never got to go then and I'd be lucky to kind of get in the last knockings of the <laughs> at film before it stopped. And so there wouldn't be any cues by the time I'd get to see it. And I didn't mind. But everybody else already talked about it. So I felt I knew the story. And when it came to Jaws, it was like, oh, is that it? Because <laughs> they told me it was so much worse than it was. Yeah. Um, let's read a few of the comments. John Sage says, popcorn fights. Oh, yeah, Saturday morning. <laughs> <laughs> popcorn fights. What a mess they had to clear up after the kids. Yeah. <laughs> Um, oh, there are so many going up here. Hi, Mor Morag. She says, hope you're all okay. We're all fine. Hope you're fine, Morag, and hope you're doing well and life's treating you okay in this strange time. We hope to see you in person again soon. Um, Sandra used to like Saturday morning pics. The thing is, I, I remember when I used to go, they'd, they'd still probably show the same things that they showed my parents' generation. It'd be like Abbott and Costello, Zorro, Flash Gordon, um, when I was little, and it was like, you know, years after all of those were made. Um, San Sandy says, Pearl and Dean adverts. Oh, yeah. Ba -ba 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 Here, Bert, this is the place. Then you'd have your local ads for restaurants, etc. Yeah. Wimpy in Colchester. It's very... I remember that because the voices yeah. were all completely different. It would be the big booming voice of whatever, and it's, yes, come to us in Crouch Street. <laughs> have you had your Knickerbocker glory yet? <laughs> How about a brand derby? Come down to the Wimpy, Colchester High Street, 24247. Colchester 24724. Um, Saturday morning kids at the local <laughs> Odeon, Flash Gordon. I'm with you there, Keith. Yeah. Jungle Book was amazing. Like the Muppet Show with kids, heads bobbing about. <laughs> um, Sandra used to go to Odeon when it was open with Sister. Elmy says the last film I saw was Girl with the, the Pearl Earring. Well, I don't know if I've ever seen that one. I've seen the photos or the, um, I've yeah. seen the artwork. Uh, <laughs> yeah, based on the original piece. Jenny says, I remember the African queen at the old flea pit, the Empire. It's been on TV a few times lately. Oh, I don't know, the Empire. Where was that? Is that local to us? 
now in Colchester? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Helen says, I remember queuing for ages and not getting in. So disappointing. Yeah, she knew about queues. Morag says, hi, Peggy. Um, hi, Peggy. Um, Helen says, used to take my children to the Saturday morning matinee. Loved it when they would run down to the front at the end and dance as if no one was watching. Yes, I remember that with my kids. <laughs> Always used to dance like to the credits and, until everybody left and the cleaners are hovering. They're hovering. Can we come in yet? No, they're still dancing. Um, Jenny says, I remember Saturday morning, but didn't get there very often because um, we lived in the country. Out in the country, I liked it when we were two when there were two films and you could sit through them again. Yeah. And Sandy says exactly, Jeanette. In the sudden change in quality of sound for the local ads was funny. Keep those memories coming in. Some interesting facts about the memory of the week. Going to the flicks, going to the pictures, Saturday morning or otherwise. I'm just gonna look for Sasha. Um, we're going to ask Sasha to come on. I'm not sure if she's around. Maybe she, she'll be back in a minute. No, she is around. I can see her now, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a lovely guest to come on now, um, ladies and gentlemen. Um, she calls herself Tragic Sasha. She's rather wonderful. She's a, a an independent music artist who's rather fabulous, brilliant voice, lovely personality, lovely songs. She's here. Hi, Sasha. How are you doing? Hi, I'm good. Thank you. How are you? Good, yes, good. Do you remember going to the cinema before the pre-lockdown days? Oh yeah. Oh, I love I think the last film that I watched was pre-pandemic. Um Little Woman, the new version. Oh yeah. Yeah, no, it was it was good. That yeah. was with the lady from La La Land, was in that one, was she? I forgot um, her name. No, Emma Watson. Emma Watson. Emma, I've got it wrong. Florence Pugh. Florence Pugh. I love that Florence Pugh. No, I haven't heard of us. Sorry. <laughs> um. Yeah. Oh, Sir Sir Sharonan. Sir Sharonan. Oh yeah, yeah. She's good. Yeah, yeah, I've seen her in a few films. I like her. Um. So life's treating you okay, ish, because we yeah, we can't expect it to be wow, wow, wow for everyone, can we? <laughs> no, it's been um, it's been interesting. Uh, yeah. No, I think it's been nice to kind of have the time to be creative and I think things have slowed down a lot, which has been nice, but yeah, I really miss, I miss my old life <laughs> a lot. Um, oh. it'll, I, it'll be back. It will be back. <laughs> and we haven't seen you at the Warman Toasty Club for a few years. You've played uh, our showcase at the art center and you also, well, I remember you coming to Walton on the Nays before and, and we yeah. did a little event there. And since then, you've been quite busy sort of like putting out new material, and wonderful new music. How's that been going? Yeah, good. Um, it's kind of because obviously live music is now not a thing at the moment. Um, it's kind of been very much based on just putting music out there and just making sure you're you're making things for people to listen to. Um, mm. So, yeah, it's been it's been really good. Um I've been making kind of music videos and making lots of social media um, things and yeah, just kind of trying to make sure that I'm, I'm staying creative in this yeah. period. So if people want to find you, they go, you go under the tragic Sasha um, yeah. now, do you? Yes, I do. Yeah. So any, on any platform, um, it's just tragic Sasha. I um, think that's a lot easier to find than just Sasha. Well, that was my thinking. <laughs> Because you just get the big DJ, didn't you? I know. Well, yeah, that's that was the problem. Um, I got told off by the big DJ, so that's why I had the name change. There we go. <laughs> and how rude of me. I've not introduced you. know Tom's above you, yes. but you don't know Je Jeanette to the side. Jeanette, Sasha. Hi, Sasha. Sasha nice Jeanette. to meet you. Nice to e meet you. <laughs> so you're going to do a song, actually. Your start song um, is, is a... It's related to our memory of the week in a way. It wasn't planned in this way. Is this the movie star? This one? Yeah, movie stars. Oh, oh yeah, I didn't even I didn't even make the uh, <laughs> the association. Yeah, well, it's movie movie week after all, and I hadn't thought about that. I just it just happens <laughs> wonderfully sometimes. You don't have to tell us about what the song's about because you know you sing it. That's obvious, but you've. You've made a video for this and you've sort of like put it out as a single a little while ago, was it? Yeah, yeah. I put it out, um, I think, last summer um, and it had a big kind of 
a music video which we kind of based on like old movies kind of vintagey style so we had like beautiful vintage costumes and um, we went to this really old kind of um, countryside like mansion <laughs> to go and to go and film it uh, in which was like amazing so yeah no that was super fun so yeah it's kind of the songs about um kind of thinking about kind of when you were growing up and what you thought that adult life would be like <laughs> compared to the kind of reality of of adult life <laughs> yeah 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 i know that one um we share that video um in a little while but first we're going to hear you play it live we should get out of your way myself tom and jeanette Going to just take those off the screen, take me off the screen and say, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the wonderful Sasha. When I was a young girl, couldn't wait to grow older. I thought the world was a disco ball, nothing was that impossible. I dreamed about romance and I always had a bigger plan for myself. A story for cinema, grew up with a being a movie star. But real life isn't like the movies. Real life isn't all it's cracked up to be. And I'm here. Cause real life really disappointed me and Now I really know the truth And I'm faking love in dark rooms Times I know about you And you slept so good And you set your heart on Hollywood I'm waiting on my lucky brain Money makes my heart ache and my appetite never traveled far. Kiss me like I'm a movie star. But real life wasn't made for TV. Real life isn't all it's cracked up to be. And I'm here. That's wonderful. 
thank you very much thank so you. good your your voice it's like a it's like greeting an old friend you haven't seen in ages it's just <laughs> it's just so nice to hear thank you thank you it's a beautiful song melancholy but i like a bit of melancholy in my life oh always always, always you know I've got the first reality. time i've heard you sasha i thought it was absolutely beautiful oh, well done lovely playing lovely singing <laughs> Thank yeah, um, John Sage says, lovely song. Elmi says, beautiful song and beautiful voice. Christine says, lovely voice. She even adds a kiss because she's that kind of lady. Well, um, very a very nice one. <laughs> and soon to be a great grandma. Sandra says, great. And Jenny Lifko. <laughs> well done. Do you, do you prefer if we call you tragic Sasha or just Sasha? Just go for Sasha. Just go for Sasha. Go okay. Friends um that's wonderful it's so good to have you on the show thanks for coming on um i've forgotten how brilliant you are um do you get up in the morning and just say yes jump out of bed i'm brilliant oh, i wish i did I yeah should. <laughs> we could all try that shouldn't we even if it's not true if we could fib a little bit yes yeah. i'll do that i would break the bed because it only can take me lying down it can't actually have me jumping up and down on it um <laughs> So movie star, if people want to watch that, I'll put the video link up um, a little bit later. And for the next song, I'll put up the links um, so people can find you on Facebook and Instagram is a good place for Sasha. Um, so thank you very much. We're going to pop you off the screen for a little while, have a little meander around some subjects and we'll welcome you back in a little while if that's OK. OK, see you in a bit. Thanks, Sasha. So good to hear her voice again. She's great, absolutely yeah. great. I've only I only came to one of the um, warm and toasty events at Walton, and and I don't remember who was doing the music, but I don't think it was her. I'm sure I would have remembered. I think it was Walton, or it, maybe it was somewhere we did a tour of the warm and toasty around retirement venues. In um, I remember there was toast to coast. I called it toast to coast that's what i should have called it i i, I offered you that but you did offer it and i didn't take <laughs> it did i um we did a tour of retirement establishments on the coast and uh sasha got a train up all the way from london um i think she was on the train with rob gabba gabacola another friend oh, who used to play piano I remember him yeah i see tom you've shared the video is that the, the movie style video is the one it's on on the page it shows up with her and yeah it's on youtube but yes sure. a great artist do check her out we put up more links to sasha soon um Ro rosanna oh no sorry more saying hi rosanna hope you're all okay and stay safe we hope you're okay rosanna we hope you're okay too more um that was lovely now we've got what have we got we've got vintage <clears throat> the first time vintage comedian of the week i've done a quick jingle it's just quick it's not very good <laughs> <laughs> Always funny, never meek Vintage comedian of the week <laughs> Yeah, I didn't have much time that one. Probably not my catchiest um, I not, am the Dennis Waterman of the Warm and Toasty Club It's got yeah. a melancholy tinge to it though for a comedian, isn't it? It has, I thought it was in a minor key Yes. Which makes it kind of sad, like the sadness of a clown, the tears of a clown, maybe. But have you ever met a happy comedian off stage? Uh, well, I know people that tell jokes. Martin Newell, he's very funny and he's happy. And, and John yeah, Cooper Clark's always in good spirits. I, I love Martin, but he's not a comedian, is he? He tells lots of gags. Oh, he does. <laughs> he does. Well, all right, it's maybe I need up. to revise that. Yeah, sorry, I I, I'm full, I'm, I should really do it happy, but I didn't have enough time. Wasn't too feeling too great earlier in the week, so I just had like a little twenty minute bit yesterday. That was the first thing that come. Sorry, we're we're, we're trying to put it down. Well done, John. No, 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 I, I'm not looking. I'm not As looking, a jingle writer, I can applaud you. <laughs> I'm not looking for praise. I'm not looking for praise. I can assure well, you. I wasn't putting it down. It's quite good, I thought, because yeah. it had melancholy element uh, yeah you know. the contrast with comedian and the sadness that lies behind well the two comedians i think both have a, a touch of melancholy about them as well as being very funny the first one up 
Les Dawson. Um, his name was Leslie Dawson Jr. Actually, he lived from 1931 to 1993. Comedian, actor, writer, and presenter is best remembered for his deadpan style, curmudgeonly persona, and jokes about his mother-in-law and wife. He made his television debut on the show, talent show Opportunity Knocks in 1967. I didn't know that. Um, and became a prominent comic on British television for the rest of his life. His charismatic routines featured Roy Barraclough and Dawson as elderly women, women, Sissy Braithway and Ada Shufflebotham. And although he was a very talented pianist, he developed a gag in which he played a familiar piano piece and then introduced hideously wrong notes, yet not <laughs> destroying the song. That was one of my earliest things of him. He used to do that piano. And it was just so funny because he knew where to put those notes, didn't he? Roll out the barrel, he'd do, wouldn't he? Roll out the barrel. <laughs> <laughs> I think we called it bum noting it like Les Dawson. <laughs> I remember him uh, with the dressing as women in the sort of hairnets and. Yeah. Oh no, he, that's right. They used to cross their arms and kind of almost like <laughs> lift up what. <laughs> what they didn't have. Padding. <laughs> um, that was funny, and then mouth words. Yeah, and he did. I think he did blankety blank later, didn't yes, he? Yes, oh. yeah, I think he did. He was around for a long time and permanent fixture. Do you remember him, Tom? Yeah. Oh, do you, of course, you remember him. Sorry. <laughs> Did you like him? Do you like him, Tom? Yeah, I did like him, actually. He was, yeah, I, did, I quite like the fact that he didn't really laugh at his own jokes. That's... <laughs> <laughs> I know, sometimes he'd say them and he'd say, he'd be telling a story with just like one line, one after another, and he'd be saying them and pretending to be sad about it, and then he'd kind of mask his almost laughing by pretending to cry and just kind of, you know, stop himself and pretend to sob. But he was really funny. He was. Yeah. So he must. I, I can't remember if he. He must have had his own shows. But I, in my notes, I've not got those. Um, my research was limited this week. But um, it no, might be my, the Dawson show. The Liz Dawson show. Yeah, that sounds like a good bet, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Did you just look that up, Tom? <laughs> no, I didn't. I was tempted though. <laughs> but was that is that a factual? He had one called the Liz Dawson yeah, show, or is. you made that up? He did. I'm sure he did. Tom's looking it up He's now. He's going to look it up now. He's using that one technology um, tool, the interweb. <laughs> what does the interweb yeah, tell you, Tom? The show. Variety show that aired Ooh. BBC. There we go. Tom's your man. He knows all the trivia about comedians. 1978 through to 1989. <laughs> there we go. As, as Keith puts it, a classic Gurner. <laughs> um, let's bring you the other one vintage TV comedian of the week he goes against Ken Dodd so Kenneth Arthur Dodd OBE lived from 1927 to 2018 he was an English comedian, singer and occasional actor, he was described as the last great musical entertainer and was primarily, primarily, primarily known <laughs> for his live stand up performances he was a lifelong resident of Notty Ash in Liverpool Dodd's career as an entertainer started in the mid-50s. His performances included rapid and incessant delivery of often surreal jokes and would run for several, several hours, frequently past midnight on his shows. His verbal and physical comedy was supplemented by his red, white and blue tickle stick prop and all, often introduced by his charis... I can't get them out. Charismatic... Characters... Can you say it, Jeanette? Charismatic. 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 Characteristic. Nice. No, characteristic. Ah, oh, right. I didn't go to school. Um, <laughs> characteristic, upbeat greeting of how tickled, I can't do an impression. How tickled am I? That was my way, my good impression of Ken Dodd there. How tickled am I? He interspersed the comedy with songs, both serious and humorous. And he did a song called Happiness, I think. Is mm -hmm. that right? He did. He was a good singer, I think. Tell Tom, tell me about your world. In, in relation to Ken Dodd, I, was it the Diddy Men? Diddy that's, Men. I, that's the program I remember. Ken Ken Dodd's Diddy Men on I think children's television, wasn't it? Mm. I quite liked. Yeah, I quite like that. I never really sort of. Apart from that, I didn't really sort of engage really with Ken Dodd. I don't know. 
He was a bit funny, wasn't he? Owed a lot of tax, apparently. <laughs> yeah, I'd <I'd> forgotten that. <laughs> <laughs> were the were the Diddy men on the show? Do you think they were kids or were they like Oompa Loompas um, style people? <laughs> <laughs> It sounds really oh, terribly <laughs> unbeastly. I think you should stop there. Yeah. <laughs> I think they've, they've taken us off, I think. <laughs> off, <Ofcom. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Tell me about Ken Dodd and you, Jeanette. Your Ken Dodd years. I was not very keen on him. My no. mum quite liked him, I think, but I found it all a bit too irritating. Um, okay. I didn't like the Diddy Man. I didn't like his stupid catchphrase and his <laughs> tickling stick. Your stupid yeah. catchphrase, yeah. It was a stupid catchphrase, I thought. <laughs> Still do. <laughs> no, I was never very keen. I don't think I liked how he looked either. Um, his hair always looked really massively greasy. And it was probably to make it stand out like that. And, and I don't think he had that much hair, but, you know, he tried to make it more of it than it was. I don't know. I just There was nothing I did like about him. We value it's your awesome honesty. Funny. <laughs> we know you're going to give it to us straight. So there's the two, Ken, Les Dawson and Ken Dodd, vintage TV comedians of the week. I thought they kind of like were about an even match because they were both mm. same sort of levels of fame <clears throat> and yeah. um, well loved, well loved, except by Jeanette and Ken Dodd there. Yeah. But basically, if you've not joined us before, every week we've gone through sweet of the week, biscuit of the week, cake of the week. Um, toast toppings of the week, shops uh, of the week, shop of the week, fairground treats of the week. We've <laughs> done them all here. Go oh, blimey, we're running out of week. Crumble, crumble of the week. Crumble of the week. That, we even we? had a crumble <laughs> of the week for a little while, didn't we? Um, Get your votes in for this, everyone, though, because yes. I think this would be a close, a close one. It could be a close one. So basically, we asked you if you want to vote. You put it on the comments on Facebook, um, and Jeanette uh, adds up the votes after, and then we crown. We just tell you. When I say crown, we tell you um, who the vintage TV comedian of the week is. There's quite a lot of votes coming in. I could see Les is getting quite a few um, and Ken's getting some. Um, Jean Dr. Sandy says, I'm with Jeanette. Ken Dodd freaked me out. Um, yeah, he was too weird. That's a bit of a, that's a tabloid headline, isn't it? Ken Dodd <laughs> freaked me out. Oh, hang on a minute. Duncan's mixing it up here. That's not on. <laughs> Duncan, he's voting for Ken Dawson. Yeah, it's like half and half. So which is it? Yeah, so get your votes in on the comments and um, see what you uh, see who you prefer. I thought they were both all right. I had no issue with neither, um, but I understand your comments. If anybody um, is being affected by the comments by Jeanette on this show, <laughs> counselling will be available after the show. Thank you very much. After I... Oh, I took her off by mistake. <laughs> I've had enough of you going on. You put my penny job down again. You're out of it, right? If you are rude about the people, you will be taken <laughs> off air. That was a mistake. <laughs> you better watch it. I will. Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna look for Sasha now because we need a bit of just calm interaction. After that shenanigans. <laughs> well, everyone gets their votes in. Hi, Sasha. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> careful, we... Sasha. He might just cut you off at any second. Be careful what you say. <laughs> yeah, no messing. These are way before your your time, Ken Dodd yeah, and, and I, Les I Dawson. I've heard of both of them, but I can't. <laughs> can't possibly comment. I can't comment. No. So you're going to do another song for us, Sasha? Yes. What have we got coming up now? Um, so I'm going to play my first song that I released. It's called Fall on My Feet, which I think you've heard before. <laughs> Just once or a hundred times. I have to say that this, uh, I, I used to request Sasha play this song when she played for us a couple of times. It is just amazing. All of her songs are amazing, but it just took me and it just made the hairs on the back of my neck stand up and just took me to another place. And I think that's the best voices and the best singers um, transport you to another place. And the day stops and, it, you know, you can just be in the moment, in the zone, focused on you, focused on the song. No pressure, Sasha. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. but you'll be great. Um, don't worry about it. And breathe. <laughs> and breathe. Um, 
<laughs> ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I should get off the screen. Get that Jeanette off screen. Yeah, let's get her off screen. The lovely Tom <laughs> um, and myself. And welcome once again, Sasha. Go to the toilet. I got more to give than this. I got more to give. And hope's not enough. Cause the fire's in control of this. And you feel it burning on. And it hurts to give in. But it hurts. To feel nothing anymore. And so you realize you're letting go. And I Wish I could fall on my feet every now and then. And I can't forgive myself if I intend to do you. Watching from a distance, you'll be seeing the truth. Should I be holding on to nothing if it's all I have left? Slip away, I'll notice you'll forgive and forget. And so. Wish I could fall on my feet every now and then. Lovely, absolutely lovely. Great to hear that song again. <laughs> yeah, I put it on there for you, Johnny. Oh, bless you. I do love that song. <laughs> I, the hairs are going back. I don't know if I look like Robert uh, Smith now out of the cure because the hair's gone right up on the back of my head. Um, it's a gorgeous song. <laughs> You probably wrote that a few years ago, now, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I released it in 2016. So, oh. yeah, must have written it like the year before. <laughs> yeah. Five years ago. Where did that go, Sasha? No, tell me about it. It's, it scares me a bit, really. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I share, I didn't go on Facebook because we've been having problems with, um, well, I won't say with them taking us down for unknown reasons. So I'm kind of like, I've got a thing now where I can't go on Facebook, but I managed to get the uh, the link. If you want to put Tragic Sasha into your search bar, you'll find Sasha's page. And also if you do Instagram, 
Again, put Tragic Sasha in that and you'll find her on Instagram. I shared both of those links. Um, as Keith says, tune. <laughs> Elmi applauds. And John Sage, a man who knows his music, says magic. Oh, that's very kind. Thank you. <laughs> I think that's a good way to describe what you do. That was lovely, wasn't it, Jeanette and Tom? It was absolutely beautiful. Again, I, I'm completely wowed by your whole talent. Fabulous. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, we're glad to have you with us. So with that said, let's get rid of you for a little while and we'll have you back soon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll see you in a sec. Thanks, Sasha. Right. Over to you, lady of the adjudication. Well, it's uh, another landslide of victory. We're getting quite um, people that know their minds and they vote with their clicks. And the result this week is, as you expect, Les Dawson. Vintage okay. TV ah. the com uh, comedian of the week, Les Dawson. I think I need to p pick better. It's my fault. <laughs> um, so with that, thanks, Jeanette. Thanks for adding those up. Okay. It wasn't a difficult one to do, that one. Wasn't, I just counted. <laughs> you just thought, counted. I would have thought it would have been closer, though. Yeah, yeah, I thought it would have been closer than that. I hope I didn't sway people's decisions. Not many. <laughs> me, me and Sandy, seeing <laughs> what we thought of Ken Todd. Probably too scared to vote anything. Else. Yeah. <laughs> or they'll, um, get, they'll get taken off by Jono. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Don't say anything. Um, no, well said, but also well voted. Suggestions. Who would you like? If you were going to do Vintage Comedian, if we do it again, I've got a little list. What, um, what Tom did suggest and Jeanette last week, I've got people like... Dick Emery, Harry Worth, Mike Yarwood, Leslie Crowver, uh, Frankie Howard, um, Marty Kane. That's a bit of a left field 80s one. Ted Rogers, Bill Con Billy Connolly and Jasper Carrot. I thought that was a good one. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Tracy Ullman, Lenny Henry, Faith Brown. Um, have you got any suggestions? Two that would go together. If you can't think of them now, make a comment later if you want. Like Rowan Atkinson and that kind of uh, Mel Mel Smith and Griffiths Jones. So I'll just put not the nine o'clock news. Yeah, whole that's cast. what I was thinking of. <laughs> Apart from Pamela Stevenson, she wasn't as funny as the others, but she was beautiful to look at. Oh, I, I thought she was funny. Um, was she? I mean, yeah, I'm looking at her again. <laughs> Pamela Stevenson against Billy Connolly. Con 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 oh, Con husband Con and wife. <laughs> Easy for you to say. I saw that uh, the big yin had his uh, injection last week, Billy Connolly. Okay. Have you had your injection yet? You, uh, in as much as vaccination. The suggestions. Sandy says Dave Allen. Um, Des O'Connor says Linda. Tommy Cooper says Christine. Oh, yeah, I forgot about Tommy Cooper. Yeah. Um, oh, he was really funny, isn't he? He used to make me laugh. Yeah, yeah. He used to. I think it, with, with a lot of these people, if they make my family laugh, then I would get it. Yeah. I didn't laugh a lot at Des O'Connor unless Morecambe and Wise were talking about him. <laughs> well, this is where I, I'm like you with that, John. That I I remember laughing with my mom about stuff and as a family, but my mom liked Ken Dodd and I just didn't at all mm -hmm. but she didn't like the not the nine o'clock news this alternative comedy she wasn't keen on at all and anything like spike milligan she thought was just absolute nonsense and ridiculous because it it was too quirky for her did she make you stand outside if you said anything about ken dodd no. <laughs> throw a blanket over me <laughs> i would stand on the cold step janet <laughs> uh, norman wisdom yes I always thought of Des O'Connor more as a singer, though, didn't you? Not a very good one, but yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, no, no, no. I I thought he was an entertainer. Yeah. So he did a bit of everything, I suppose. Did we have many American um, entertainers back then? I because these oh, are very well, British, aren't they? Going early, Bob Hope. Ah. Um. He was English anyway, wasn't he, Bob Hope? <laughs> it probably was <laughs> originally. <laughs> Any more for any more? I don't know. I can't think of any American ones. So th there it is. It's pitched out there. Ginny Lifko says the one with the fez. That's Tommy Cooper. Luckily, I read this morning. If you know you're forgetful, you haven't got dementia because you don't know you are forgetful if you have it. 
Ah, uh, yeah, uh, I get that. Yeah, you wouldn't know. Um, make your suggestions known if you want to include anybody on Vintage Comedian of the Week, or if you want another subject of the week, tell us. <clears throat> we'll have a go at it. Um, he now, sorry, Tom. he was born in London, Bob Hope. Bob Hope was oh, born in you London. You were right, you knew that. You are right, Jenny. Any women comedians then? I did mention um, uh, Tracy Faith Orman, Brown. Faith Brown. Marty Kane, um, wasn't it? Marty Kane. There's Joyce Grenfell, but she's not. Who would you put her against? Because it's really early. Um, Arthur Haynes says, Brian, I remember the name. I don't remember him. Mm. Any any women comedians you can think of? Um, Whoopi Goldberg from America, more modern one. Mm. Who was the guy? Who was a guy that used to like do the arms and split himself in the middle down the? That was Harry Worth. Harry Worth. Harry Worth, yeah. In the mirror, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. In the shop window, wasn't it? Can you think? Can you two think of women comedians, vintage ones? It's not because we're not wanting to include women. I always think in things you should include more women than men, but there wasn't a lot around, were there? No. Victoria Wood, that's a great oh, one, Sandy. Oh, wow, how can yeah, I Victoria her? Wood. With, really? um, with the Birmingham, what's her name? With the, the Birmingham. <laughs> yeah, the Birmingham. Victoria Wood's sidekick. The, um, oh, Julie Walters. Julie Walters, that's it. Who's more of a great actress. She is, yeah. Victoria Wood, I will put that down in my special red book. Oh, um, let's do it, let's yeah. do it. Um yeah, have a think. Are there any more women comedians you can think of? We need more. Um, and Jenny meant in the same era as Les Dawson. Yeah, you're right. We're going vintage. Anyway, any road up. Let me just cue this up. It's time for Jeanette's Poem of the Week. It's Poem of the Week. It's sometimes short and sweet. It's Poem of the Week. And it's always my feet. <laughs> wow. Sorry, I, you have to indulge me every week with that jingle. I've never written one before and I like it. Um, so this week's poem, it's called, it was sent in by Jenny Lithgow. Thank you very much, Jenny. Uh, it's called Where Shall We Go? And it's by W.R. Baker. I'm going to do this close to the microphone and do it quietly. Where shall we go? Now half light's fallen. Shall I take you by the hand and lead you to the ancient you through shadowed paths and darkened lands? Do not trip, nor slip, or falter. Snap no twig or brush the bowers. Let the downwind be our ally, as there we'll sit, silent as owls. Make no noise, not even whispers. I'll hear your thoughts, no need for sound. Not even moths should know we're here, nor those that cometh from the ground. Wait and watch, quite statue still. Embrace the cold, its chill and grasp. Now look, my dear, what moveth yonder? Tis he that comes with two-toned mask. That's Where Shall We Go by W.R. Baker. Thank you. That was beautifully read. It was very gentle. Really it's such a lovely, lovely sweet song, isn't it? I don't know what two-toned mask is, but... I think that's something that people can interpret, maybe. So, Jenny, if you know that, let, let us know what was meant by the poet. Yeah, really nicely read. Um, thank you. Beautiful, Jeanette. You always pick a good one. Um, thank you. Oh, for Jenny, that. she sent in three, and that was the one that. Really Jenny was... Lifkoe, the former uh, queen of the retro raffle scene, now the queen of the sending in for Jeanette's <laughs> poem of the week, Queen. <laughs> oh, um, yes. Also <laughs> mentioned a few people Beryl Reed. Female comedians, Lucille Ball. Oh, yes. Peggy Mount. Because um, I, I think of like Beryl Reed as a sort of comedic actress. Yeah. Then there's Fora Heard and Peggy Mount are a similar sort of thing. Um, and who was the one? Ooh, I was stood standing there. Uh, who said that? I can't do the accent. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's a bit sort of doing the Les Dawson sort of move. Ooh, I was stood standing there. Did she do Arkwright? Did she do a show about the funeral directors, Arkwright? No, um, it was uh, when there was somebody upstairs, and she bang with the, bang the ceiling. That wasn't Beryl she, Reed, was it? No. She do a lot of 
malapropisms as well. What was yeah. the Brian's just done it? Hilda Baker. Hilda Baker. Baker. Yeah. She did um with oh gosh, his name's gone now. She did um I've got chills there multiplying with Arthur Mullard. Yes. And it was a hit. <laughs> How do I remember these things? I don't remember what I had for breakfast. How strange. Um, Beryl Reed, Hilda Baker. Beautiful, beautifully read, Jeanette. It, it's a bang. It's a badger. I thought she said it's a banger. <laughs> that poem's a banger like. Uh, it's a tone face, yeah. Um, great poem, says Sandra. Crescent Moon, uh, says Keith. Um, well read, Jeanette and Jono did get rid, didn't get rid of you, so it must have been worked out for you. <laughs> um, Nelly's Pickles Gill, yes. that was a character, oh, it's character the yeah. baker. So, so we've got all of those. We'll um, we'll do one next week. But what do you? What would you? Two would you put together to go against each other? Can have Ooh. a battle of the women comedians if you want. You could have a battle yeah. of the sexes, couldn't you? Battle of the sexes. Mm -hmm. Comedian against a man comedian. Yeah. I have to say, I mean, there's some really great ones there, but Victoria Wood, I think she just takes, yeah, she takes the crown, I think, for me. It's hard to pitch her against somebody. Yeah, exactly. We think about these things a lot. You know, normally we're stuck on biscuits thinking, what biscuits are going to be? The big topics of the day. Now yeah. we've moved on to vintage comedians. I don't want um, a British comedian right now, but I do want a biscuit right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, Christy says, lovely, Jeanette. Thank you. Thank you for all the lovely comments about the poems that I read. I, I don't write them, and, and I'm just, you know, <laughs> delivering them. But thank you for saying that I read them nicely. I, I really appreciate it. You do. And it's uh, deserved praise. Pam Ayres, says Sandra. Another one. with a, Yeah, she was funny. Still going, isn't she? I believe. Pam Ayers against Martin Newell. There you go. Who is that, Tom? Pam Ayers against Martin Newell. There you go. <laughs> yeah, we could have poets. Poets. Poets of <laughs> the week. Poets of the week. <laughs> Tell you what, I'm going to be going jingle crazy. <laughs> Martin Newell. Oh, I'll remember that. <laughs> I can't, not got enough ink. Now, if I can find Sasha, I'm going to welcome her back onto the stage. We could do that. <laughs> Oh. Their ground treat of the week came. Oh, Sorry yeah. about that. Not Golden not, Brown. Um, yeah, it's not Golden Brown. Hi, Sasha. Hi. Sorry for us going on. This is what we do every week. No, I, I'm enjoying it. As, as if there's not a lockdown and other important things going on. <laughs> the idea, really, the idea is just to switch off the noise of the day for people. Yeah, definitely. Well, I think that's it's definitely done it for me. Oh, bless you. <laughs> um, it's done it for you. Good. Um, <laughs> We um we have our regulars who come to who've come to our physical events when we do memory afternoons, but we've also sort of attracted new people, often from different places, not just in England, but sort of different places in the world sometimes, um, who come along of different ages, um, just to sort of I think it's nice to stay connected. One on the internet is a nice way to be connected to our members, but it's also nice to you know, if you listen to the news all day or you listen to the nature of the mon the mundane nature of a lockdown, it's kind of nice just to have a break from it. Um, yeah, definitely. definitely. So, yeah, that's what we're, we're here to do. Um, now, to you, Sasha, are you um, are you able to tell, tell anybody about any upcoming stuff? Obviously, no gigs. Gigs are off at the moment. But... No gigs. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm. I'm kind of making. I'm in the process at the moment of making a EP. So I'm kind of. I've finished all the all the kind of creative kind of parts, and now it's just kind of getting it ready to be played. <laughs> so kind of mixing and mastering. I don't know if that means <laughs> anything to anyone, um, but kind of just getting them finished off, and then finding an avenue to put them out through so yeah, yeah there are things in the pipeline it's just kind of i'm in the boring stage at the moment of just tying up every loose end <laughs> yeah but sort of bringing those songs together for me sometimes it's the exciting bit it's the it's bit after that i don't like all the pr in and all the rest of oh, it gosh. yeah yeah no that, that's true actually <laughs> maybe this is as good as it's gonna get oh no i didn't mean it like that <laughs> <laughs> 
um, how many songs are you, do you know how many you're going to put on the ep five five, five. yeah nice. five tracks um and yeah i think i'm going to kind of release them one by one over the course of this year maybe from kind of easter time but um but yeah you know how it, how it is it's it's kind of getting everything lined up at, at the right time getting all the pr and and yeah. support and the money together and things like that so yeah it's just the kind of waiting game at the moment but i'm really happy with the songs so. yeah and there's so much work creative songwriters singers have to do behind the scenes to get it all together and in this modern age as it was mentioned in pre-show you have to gather so much content uh, that be videos it'll be sort of like photos and there's so many different things that you've got to get together it's a, it's a life's work isn't it yeah it's it's really difficult it's it's kind of um it's very demanding is what i would say it's it's a demanding um workload i think because you kind of have to have things constantly you're putting out and constantly doing things and you don't really there's not really much time to rest i mean i love it it's great <laughs> it sounds like i'm just complaining about it but no it's it's really good but it is very it's exhausting sometimes the the amount of stuff that you have to put out yeah and i know it's the the modern way but it's what social media forces us to do a lot of it comes from our own lives so we're sharing a lot about our own lives really um everybody does it who's got a social media page they'll show photos of their family and they're sharing that with the world or whatever they do and sort of it enforces you to sort of have lots of content on the go all the time yeah it's interesting because if you look at kind of um artists that were around maybe 20 years ago i think there was such a privacy about them you know like there was such a a mystery nobody knew anything about their personal lives really like sometimes you'd read about them in the paper or, or something but nowadays it's like you have to be putting everything every part of yourself public and i think that's that's not just music that's like every kind of creative career um so yeah it's it's interesting i wonder what it's going to be like in the future i wonder if it's going to get like better <laughs> um or whether we're going to be demanded on a little bit more yeah because i think it's so tough for creatives i think when people you're right about in the past where people could have private lives and i think sometimes people decide they're not going to involve their life or their children too much um their families what they're doing day to day and sometimes they're they're punished for that in as much as they don't get as much coverage but i yeah. think sort of like you can make choices and and i know there's sort of certain things people don't need to share um I just think it's harder it's harder now because it's we're saturated as good as it is and the choice for the consumer we're saturated with the amount of artists that there are out there musically who paint who do different things there's just so many of them there's too much that i think there's just too much things and i think that what i was saying to you earlier about kind of um i think people constantly have an appetite for new things and and more and more content and more to be entertained more and i think it's it's people's maybe attention spans are a little bit um less than they used to be um so yeah it creates like there's so much there's just so much of everything all the time um but who knows maybe the maybe covid will be the with the turning point and <laughs> and things will kind of become a little bit less online maybe there'll be more of a demand for real life but um i think it's moving towards there's a demand for more things that are made with a personal touch yeah um and that consumables don't have to be sort of like all packaged up for social media i've seen a lot of that and and you know i take your word and hope that that's the right way i think <laughs> I, it gives me a little bit of light to look forward to trying to be an optimist yeah for once, but <laughs> But yeah, no, I think it's it's. I think the way, the way people are using social media is interesting now, though, because I think everybody's kind of a bit more truthful on social media, kind of about their day to day lives, which I think is nice. Because I think a couple of years ago there was a tendency to just show all of the shiny and sunshine and rainbows yeah. <laughs> on social media, and now I think people have kind of um, given that up a little bit, which is interesting to see.
Yeah, they were showing the one photo of out of a thousand they've spent the last five hours taking. Yeah. That one's the ultimate best, and I look the best in that one. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's interesting. We don't always talk about this on the show. It's really nice to have your insight, not only your talent as an artist, but your insight, and it's quite interesting to talk about it. Thank you. Um, <laughs> we we, <laughs> we, um, we should ask where people find you. Do you have a website or do you prefer people go through Instagram and places like that? I would say Instagram, social media type vibes. My website is not very good. <laughs> yeah, so, okay. um, yeah, I would. I am in the process of making a nice one. But um, yeah, social media for now is the place. That's good. I think a lot of artists, the best way to do it is just have a one landing page, not a whole website. Just have a landing page where people can go, they can see your latest work and they can click to go somewhere else where there's more. Exactly. And you don't need to have it all on as an official website. Well, I don't know how many people actually, I, I can't remember the last time I went on a musician's like actual website, but mm. I don't know. There's some tips for your kids if you're just starting out. Heard it from Sasha first on the One Toasty Club. Um, right, we're going to get you to sing a lovely song, if you may, your last song. Any any, uh, any words about this one, or do you just want to go straight ahead and sing it? Yeah, sure. Um, so this song is called Sleepwalking, um, and I wrote it kind of in the midst of the pandemic, um, and I feel like we all feel a bit like we're sleepwalking at the moment. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and it's kind of, yeah, it's about being obviously alive and, and breathing but not not feeling like you're kind of actually like living and experiencing things to their fullest um so yeah no I think I hopefully people will be able to relate to it oh I'm sure they will we're looking forward to hearing it I'm going to take us off the screen excuse me Tom and Jeanette um as we welcome once again for the last time today Sasha Two, three, four, five, six feet under Hanging my clothes for my mother Tell her I'm fine But how do you breathe underwater? I lost my appetite back in July and now it's a
Wow, that was lovely. Sleepwalking by Sasha. Um, a joyous, beautifully, slightly melancholy song, but just wonderful. I like how you not only create songs um, that are beautiful, and but I love some of the space you leave. Um, you. Those moments where you just pause and then you're back in and it's just lovely. It's, you, there's no need to rush and often less is more. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was doing it very slowly and just kind of in the me melancholy vibe <laughs> i think it's as keith keith glenn baker says it's beautiful thank you very much keith <laughs> and elmy says definitely a song we can all relate to and beautifully sung oh that's so nice thank oh there'd be, probably be more people saying nice things um thanks so much for coming on sasha we've just about run out of time so um we're just going to do our end credits but thanks for coming on do come back and see us soon We'd love to have you on. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Um, Sleepwalking, is that going to be on the new EP? I should have asked. Yes. Yes. Look forward yeah. to that. Good <laughs> luck with it. Um, you can hang around if you wanted to chat afterwards. Um, if not, we'll catch you online. Um, but ladies and gentlemen, once again, thanks for being with us, Sasha. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> thanks, mate. That's Sasha. Um, what a very talented young lady that is. She's talented, beautiful, and what I've really noticed as well, how how eloquently she speaks. She's just lovely, isn't she? She's, she's great to have on yeah. the show. Yeah, and... Um, very articulate, <clears throat> that's what I was trying to say. I tried to give our artists time to sort of, like, say things, because I talk too much. I think it'd be nice if we, perhaps, Jeanette and Tom ask some questions oh, next oh. time, because I don't... I thought you were going to say if we got off and give them some more time to talk yeah let's get that Jeanette <laughs> off she's trouble um probably just be taken off screen won't be Jeanette I think. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah just if i don't like if i don't like the kind of questions you're asking them i'll just take you off so yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. what i think she really meant was <laughs> <laughs> yeah get out of it no i just thought it'd be nice um it's i i talk too much and i can't you help don't. myself you don't john um, i don't know why you i know i'm that. the host and you you know we love listening to you. You're very, very funny. Um, uh, Tom, on the other hand. <laughs> oh, a late blow there. No, Tom. I'm kidding. I'm just, well, there's no Carol this week. Somebody's got to do the job. I don't know where Here Carol is. <laughs> Duncan yeah, says, lovely. Duncan says, Encore, thank you, Sasha. Um, Elmi says, thank you for a, a lovely afternoon. See you all next week. See you next week, Elmi. Christine, yeah. the lovely Christine says, thank you for a lovely afternoon. See you all next week. Keep safe. And Sandra says, yes, it goes so quick. It does. I hope you've enjoyed being with us for the last uh, hour and a half or so. Thanks to Sasha. Thanks to Jeanette. Thanks to Tom. I'm going to find the end credits and just slowly take us off the screen. Uh, and we'll see you again at one o'clock next week. Let me just find those credits. Where are you credits? See you later. Bye. We've all got a tale to tell. Times were not always so But putting it all aside We made it through by and by It's warm and toasty in here Share our laughter, sometimes tears You'll be welcome with a cup of tea And a biscuit, maybe two or three Wrapped in a little white cloth Cooking for hours in the old iron pot -da -da -da. There's a jam roly-poly for tea -da -da -da. Enough for you and dad and grandma and me What did we like the most? Fish paste sandwich Peas on toast 
nothing could come close To bubble and squeak the day after our sun 